Hey guys, and welcome back to Lesson on Coding. My name is Ryan Lesson. So in today's video, I thought we would talk about route guards in the Angular 4 framework. More specifically, I'm talking about the can activate route guard. And this is how you add security to your routes so people need to be logged in or authenticated by your app to access certain routes within your application. So to give you a quick example with a little app I built today, let's just hop right on in. So as you can see, I have mocked out a quick login screen. And if I click login, um, we are taken to the main page and we see this very, very cool meme. All right, so it's all fine and dandy. It works, it logs us in, but here's the problem. If we look at our routes, we'll see that accessing our main route has no security to it. It doesn't check to see if that user is authenticated. And if you also look, we're just routing them right to the main route. So we don't want that. We want the user to be authenticated by our application before they could access this main page and see this very cool meme. So let's hop right in the code and let's activate some security. <laughs> All right. So first things first, I'm going to come over here into the services folder and I'm going to add a file and I'm going to call it Logged in route guard .ts. Okay. So when I get this, I'm just going to quickly, I'm just going to copy and paste a few things over. All right. So we're going to import an injectable that can activate and the two parameters it takes, which is the activated route snapshot and the router snapshot and the router for navigation and just some observables right here. And we have the Angular HTTP. Okay, so let's come down here and let's mock out a service real quick. RD. And we're going to call the logged in auth guard. And it's going to implement the can activate. Okay, so right now it's complaining off the bat that hey, it's not going to be working. Oh, we got a duplicate right there. All right, so it's going to complain that we haven't implemented the can activate route guard. So let's create a constructor real quick. Oh no, let's define some variables actually. So we're going to define an is logged in parameter in our service. So what we're going to do with that is this will tell our service if the user is logged in or not. We're also going to define a, a redirect URL. And this is the URL that they will be taken to if they are authenticated. Right. So let's come here and we're going to just inject in the, the router. Okay, awesome. We're going to come down here and now we're going to implement our can activate method. So these are the two parameters that the can activate route guard takes. And it just gives us information about the current routes or the routes in general. And that's going to be router. Oh, no, router. Router state snapshot. Sorry, guys. There you go. All right. Perfect. So got all those in. Awesome. What are you complaining about? It's probably complaining that I need to make you public. Oh. Okay, there we go. Awesome. All right. So we look up here. We're getting another error because we need it to return. The can activate guard needs to return a Boolean, which is either true or false. True means obviously they can ac access that route. They're authenticated. And false means they're not. So to do this, we're going to come into our can activate and we're going to so we are going to go state URL. So we're going to get the current URL, and then we're going to either return true or false through our check login method. Okay, so we're going to do this check login. So let's create the check login method right here. Okay, so it's going to 
take the URL, which will be a string, and it's going to return a Boolean. Awesome. So we're going to be like if this dot is logged in. So if the user is logged in, then we we don't need to check to see if they're authenticated. We could just automatically return true. So if it is, we're going to return true. Else we're going to then have to check to see if the user is authenticated. So to do this today, we're just going to mock out a quick API route that will authenticate the user once hit. So right now, I'm going to go to the back end right now and create an API method that will do exactly that. Okay, so so I have the I have the file already created. So let's create that API endpoint for our uh, can activate router to hit. So oh, also I'm using a uh, .NET Core. This is .NET Core, by the way, 2.0, I believe. All right, action results. So we're just gonna set up a quick git method. That's just gonna return, okay. Okay, there we go. So we set up our endpoint, which will just be called log API slash login, and it's just gonna return okay. All right, awesome. So now let's come back here into our logged in route, route guard, or was it logged in route guard? Yes. And we are going to now hit this endpoint. Okay. So to do this, we will be using an observable of how to do this. And we'll also probably be using another service, I believe. Let me think. Yeah, we're going to be using another service. So we're going to have to then come into our service and we're going to create a new file. And this is just going to be called auth auth service dot ts okay so actually yeah so let me scaffold this out real quick and then i forgot to put both of these as a provider in the app that module so i'll do that in one second once i get this scaffold out okay and we're going to call this auth route service okay and we're just going to add a couple imports to it real quick i'm just going to copy and Paste over, awesome. All right, perfect, looks good. All right, so now we're gonna just come into our app module and we're gonna go down to providers and we're gonna provide the log in auth guard and we're also gonna pr provide the auth route service. Okay, perfect, so we had that all in, it's good. Our application knows about our two services. So what we want this service to basically do is first I'm going to create a variable. Okay. One second guys, let me just scaffold this out. Oh shoot, that's like that. There we go. Okay. So got that scaffold out. So what we're gonna do here, what we're gonna do here is we're basically going to send an API call to our back end and it's gonna either return true or it's gonna either return an error, which if it returns an error, we're gonna return false. And if it returns true, then we know the user is authenticated from our server and we can log them in. So we're going to call this public is logged in and it's going to be a type observable boolean. Okay. So let's return this dot HTTP. So we're going to use the angular HTTP service here. And I set up, uh, through the webpack define plugin, I set up this uh, variable already and it's just going to go to localhost 5000. So just think of process.env.api URL as localhost 8000. And we're gonna send it to API slash login. Okay, nice, that looks good. And we're gonna map the results to, oops.
error or okay so there we go we have our api call set up so now let's just go back into our logged in auth guard and then implement it so we are going to do oh we forgot to inject it into our constructor let me do that real quick so we're going to do private okay there we go and then we're just going to call it right here so we're going to do this that all service dot is logged in and then we're going to subscribe to that so this res here is where it returns okay and if it is we're going to just do this that is logged in equals true and then we're going to do this dot router dot navigate by url and we're going to go to yes that's right the url that we have saved from our redirect url up here okay perfect and then also we're going to set up an error and if this gets hit we're just going to do this dot is logged in equals false Nope. Extra space. Type here equals URL. Perfect. And then we're gonna do this dot router dot navigate by URL. Okay. So to clearly explain what that's doing one more time is we're gonna call our is logged in. Our is logged in from our off service is gonna call our back end. Our back end's either gonna return okay or an error. If it returns okay. Then we're gonna redirect them to the page that they were trying to access, in this case, the main page. And if it's an error, we're going to then send them back to the login page. Okay, so now there's one more step we need to do, and we need to come into our log, and we need to come into our login component. No, excuse me, we need to go into our app routes and then we need to add the can activate route guard right here. So can activate. So it's gonna, it takes an array of can activate. So again, you could chain multiple can activates here. So you don't just need one. You could literally have as many as you want right there. And it's gonna be logged in off guard. Perfect. Okay, so now we have our method right here. And now let's try to log in. Okay, so as you can see, that's not working. Let me put the developer tools at the bottom so we can see what's going on. So we tried that out and it's not working and we're getting a cores error. So cores is something that you need to know when you're trying to do any cross origin uh, requests. In this case, I'm running the dev server on localhost 3000 and we have our server running on localhost 5000. So you could use a proxy and put them both on the same server and not have to worry about cores. But in this case, I'm just going to keep this how it is and just add cores to our backend. So I'm going to come in here, go into the startup.cs, come down here to our app. And so our app is the method that gets called. So you can read it right here. It gets called by the runtime. Uses this method to con use this method to configure the HTTP request pipeline. So it's basically middleware on every HTTP request. So we're going to do app dot, oop, one second, I got to make sure I get this right. Okay, so we're going to do app dot use cores. And we're just going to allow. Okay. So I'm not going to get too in-depth on what I did there, but basically I'm allowing cross-origin requests from anyone. Okay, so got that. So let me restart my back end. All right, let's refresh the page and let's try the request one more time. So we're going to do the request and boom, we are navigated to the main page and we can see our cool meme. So now I'll shut the network tab just to make sure that worked. As you can see, we did call our login um, endpoint right there and as you can see it returned the 200 okay 
All right, guys. So that's how you use the can activate route guard active to give us some security to your application. Um, thanks for watching and have a good one, guys. Woo!